parking in this place I worship you I worship you Good morning, boys and girls. This is Auntie Rochelle, and I'll be your teacher for today, Sunday, July 5. Our unit title is God's Gift to Life. Our lesson title, A Special Gift. Our Bible focus comes from Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 28, and Acts chapter 17, verses 24 to 28. Let's go into our Bible reading. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything because he himself gives all men life and breath and everything else. From one man he made every nation of men that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he determined the time set for them and the exact places where they should live. God did this so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. The following video helps us to understand what it means to be made in God's image. Let's listen. God's story. God made people. So part of God's story is about how he made people, and it goes like this. The very beginning of time, God made the world, and he did it just by speaking. He made the blue sky and planets with rings and galaxies exploding with stars. He made puffy clouds and dry land and sparkling water. He covered the earth with deserts and mountains and planted forests and jungles. He sprinkled the world with flowers and bugs and birds and fish and animals of all kinds. It was a perfect home, full of fun creatures. And God called all of it good, but he wasn't done creating yet. God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. This time, though, God didn't just speak. First, he took some dust from the ground. Then he breathed into the dust with his own breath. By doing that, he created the very first person, a man called Adam. God put Adam in an amazing garden called Eden. But Adam was different than the other living creatures God had made. In fact, God put Adam in charge of everything else. But Adam needed a friend. So the Bible says that God caused him to fall into a deep sleep. While Adam was sleeping, God made a woman from one of Adam's ribs. Her name was Eve. And she and Adam were free to live happily in the garden where they could walk and talk with God. It was perfect. Once Adam and Eve were together caring for the garden, God didn't just call the world good, he called it very good. See, people are God's favorite. 
Remember, we were made in his own image, in his likeness. The Bible says, God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. We don't know exactly what it means to be created in God's image. We do know it means he made us like him. So our eyes, our skin, our teeth, our bones are perfectly crafted by God. Our personalities, our sense of humor, our sensitivities, our hobbies, our talents, everything is made by God so that we can be like him. And we have abilities that none of the animals have. We can paint pictures and write poems. We can solve math problems, explain what we're thinking, and invent cool new things. Whether we like to run, teach, build, or anything else, God understands us. Of course, we don't always act perfectly, but that's another part of the story. When God made Adam and Eve, he crafted them in his image. He made them, and us, like him. That's the story of how God made people. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. God made the whole world. It was a perfect home. He called it good. He breathed into dust and made Adam. He took one of Adam's ribs and made Eve. Then he called the world very good. He made us like him, in his image. He understands us, and we are his favorite. And that's a part of God's story. The story of the creation of the world in Genesis tells us that God created mankind, males and females, in his image and he made us to be in charge of everything else that he had created on the earth. This makes it very clear that God considers human beings to be his most important creation of all. As God's special creation, we need to understand how important we are to God, but we also need to realize that because we are so special to Him, we have many responsibilities. The following are some important things we must remember. 1. God considers each of us special and important. Therefore, He doesn't think about how we look, the color of our skin, where we live, or how smart we are. Once he created us, we are special to him. So special that he allowed his only son to die so that we can have a special relationship with God. 2. Since all human beings are so special to God, we need to realize that everyone that God created is also important to him. This means we must respect all people and treat them well because they are God's creation. 3. God made us responsible for the earth and everything in it, the animals, the land, and all of the earth's resources. This means we must not be wasteful and we must take care of the environment. 4. Psalm 139 verse 14 says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Since God gave us many talents, we need to use these talents wisely and always use them for good things. This week's memory verse comes to us from Psalm 134, verse 14. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Reflection do you consider yourself to be special or do you compare yourself to others and try to be like them? Hmm. Make a list of all the talents that you have and ask your family and closest friends what they think your talents are. Compare the two lists. But most importantly, no matter what is on your list, be it one or two or ten talents. Remember, you are special. God made you special. There's only one of you. Have a wonderful week, boys and girls.
and see you next week. Jamaica Baptist Union Christian Education Department Sunday School Creative Expression Competition 2020. The theme for this year is COVID-19, finding new hope during our new norm. The three categories of creative expressions are drawing or painting, reflective prose, or reflective poetry. Your work should reflect your experience of COVID-19. Show how your faith has influenced your thinking or behavior during the pandemic. The age groups are younger children, seven to nine years, older children, 10 to 12 years, youth, 13 to 18 years, and adults, 19 years and over. The entry requirement is you must be a member of a Sunday school class with one of our Jamaica Baptist Union churches. Entry closing date is August 31st, 2020. There will be first, second, and third place prizes for each age group. Now, our competition rules and registration forms are available from your Sunday school superintendent, your church office, or the Jamaica Baptist Union website. Touching every heart I worship you I worship you You are here Healing